What is up traders and welcome to another tutorial from Invest Beyond. Today's tutorial I'm basically going to be covering a concept which is probably which is a crucial concept actually in my own trading strategy. Um, it is a very simple strategy that a lot of people do not use appropriately, uh, which is why I wanted to you know jump on and do a quick tutorial on how I use um, basically trend lines, guys. It's all about trend lines this video. Uh, but before I get into the video, uh, like with everything, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let's get Invest Beyond out there. We're growing very fast. I'm pretty happy with how the community is going so far. Uh, and, you know, I just want to keep pushing this until, you know, we have one of the strongest Forex communities out there, which is the end goal, essentially, guys. Um, but, yeah, like I said, today we're going to be looking at trend lines. Uh, a lot of people talk shit about trend lines. Excuse my French, but a lot of people do always... Uh, uh, they say they don't work and all this sort of thing. Guys, they work, okay? Trend lines are one of the best things in terms of finding dynamic price ranges um, out of any concept. But like any other concept in Forex or in trading, it has to be done correctly. And also, like any other concept, when there is a confluence in the market of trend lines and any other form of support and resistance, be it horizontal levels or be it Fibonacci levels, we're looking at a powerful area. And like I said, Trend lines are dynamic, guys, so they are not a fixed set point in the market. However, when you do find them in confluence, goddamn, you better get trading, guys. That's that's the point you want to be in. Um, so how I'm going to break down the video today, first thing I want you to do is just get down a pen and paper um, or anything to write some notes on because I just want to cover some key points initially before we get started showing some examples. Uh and that's just basically the rules of rules of trend lines. So there's three basic rules, guys, and these are the three rules that I always use when I'm when I'm drawing with trend lines or when I'm marking up the area. Uh, the first rule for me is you always have to mark from the lows to the highs for an uptrend or a highs to the lows on a downtrend. Very simple rule. Some people don't do it right. And also the second rule, you want to be marking wicks to wicks. Some people mark bodies to bodies, but in my opinion, if you want to have true accurate sort of dynamic price range, then Wix is where you're looking for because you can mark bodies to bodies and more, I'd say probably eight times out of 10, uh, you will actually get a push out of trend before it closed back in with a wick. Uh, so what we're looking for is basically uh, to mark where we're gonna try and predict that the wick's gonna end up, which will give us a, a sniper entry essentially, guys. And that's what, you know, everyone loves a sniper entry. No drawdown, straight profits. I mean, what more could you want from the market, right? Um, but the basic rules of trend lines we need to keep into consideration is the, the formation of the trend and how we can evaluate whether that trend line is going to work or not. Um, for me, I draw my trend lines from weekly, daily down to four hour. I don't mess around with hourly trend lines or anything like that, uh, purely because obviously the higher the volume and price, the more strong the reaction is going to be um, on that trend line structure, which is why I've got CAD JPY here um, open on the weekly purely because we can see quite clearly there is a beautiful descending channel information here on CAD JPY. And if you were trading the trend lines, you would have made some juicy profits, guys. If you see the size of these drops from off uh, and, and even the size of these buys from these trend line structures is ridiculous, guys, you know. Um, but looking at this, the basic rules and concepts which I want to talk about is identifying the trend and identifying the trend line structure, which is what we're going to focus on today. So the first key rule when for identifying any trend line structure. If we were to del delete this, uh, actually, yeah, let's just go back here, replay. We're gonna put the price here. We're gonna delete this stuff here. And we're gonna go here. So right now, this is what CAD JPY would have looked like in, uh, in its naked form back in this day here, which was all the way back in 2018. Okay, obviously now keep in mind this is weekly charts, but the concept is not the set is exactly the same from weekly, daily to four hour. We look at the four hour charts in the middle. Um, but if we press play on this and we see price action start to evolve in the future, you know, we speed this up a little bit just because, uh, you know, we can clearly see the price, you know, is starting to make moves here. Now, there is no trend line structure here for me to play with, right? We do not know. Uh, where there could be a trend line structure. So when do we start evaluating when there could be a trend? Boom, right here. Now, how do we know that there could be a valid trend within the structure here? Right? Quite simply, what we have here is the creation of 
a trending structure in the form of, let me just get my tool up here. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it here? We have a trending structure in the form of a high, high. And then we broke down, we formed a low, low. And price came back up here, formed a new high, and then we've dipped down to form a new low. Keep in mind this is weekly, so we're looking at daily. Uh, we look at daily quickly. You know, you can see price rejected there. We can clearly see that there is a formation of trend forming here. Now, this is a signal of, okay, cool, there's trend line structures that come into play here. Because of this formation, keep in mind if it was inverse, if it was a higher high or a higher low, it would be an uptrend, right? So now we go about drawing our wigs. We go about drawing our trend line structures. Daily, weekly, it doesn't matter. We'll see that because we'll start on the weekly and we'll work our way through. So now we can see that the first rule, again, write these down. The first rule is if we have two touches on a potential trend, so two touches in the form of here, from this high to this high, that's two touches, right? Um, and keep in mind when you're drawing it, draw it wicks to wicks. Trading View has this beautiful magnet tool. Um, if you're on Mac, it is command for the shortcut. If you're on Windows, it is control. Um, and then what that basically does is it snaps price to the top of the wicks. And then from there, we can see, okay, cool. We have a potential trend forming here. However, why do I say potential? Purely because of the fact, let me just draw one down here as well. Purely because of the fact, we only have two touches, correct? If we go down to the day, we can see, just get this, move this here, draw it up a little bit. We can clearly see that there's only two touches on trend here. One touch, two touch. And the fact that we have these low lows, which we can connect, signals we may have a channel for them, right? So your natural reaction trading this trend, although it is not a valid trend yet, guys, keep that in mind, it does not become a valid trend until we have a third touch. The third touch is key to trading and validating trend. The third touch will establish the trend or it will establish the breakout of trend, right? Um, so we wouldn't have been able to trade this, you know, we wouldn't have been able to establish this structure here until this touches here you may have been able to trade price action on the higher on the lower high but you would not be able to trade the trend line okay because before this high was formed this trend was not in existence this trend is still not established until we get a third touch and a rejection so remember that the key for trends is that third touch right um, as we see in price reacting again now we're on the daily we can see price coming down forming up coming up coming up we're finding some range here now, my bet and my money was always going to be on a third trend line touch coming into play here. You can see how many days this took to evolve. Not a lot of price action here. Um, not a lot of trading into trend here. But now we start to get interested because we can see this upper trend line coming into play now, right? And what did we get? We get a touch there. We've established our downtrend. This is a. I'm using these larger volumes just to show you because um, purely because of the the massive move that we got you can get here this is why patience as a trader is key okay because when you establish weekly trends i mean we have a price movement here you know yes okay it took a long time to get there but that's a thousand pips which you could have entered with no drawdown and you can let that trade chill out for quite a while you know but this is where we're interested right here we have established that there is a third touch on trend so what we would have been waiting for Again, doesn't matter if this four hour volume, uh, the concept is still exactly the same. We will look at four hour volume again. But what we've seen here is prices touch for the third time. So we were watching the trend line structure on CAD JPY. We we're waiting for that third touch. As soon as we come in, let me just zoom in on that a little bit. Look at that evening star right there, hangman, hanging man. Uh, if we're looking on the four hour volume, we would have traded the break of this low because this was the daily lows, guys. So. When you're trading a breakdown, mark your daily lows. So we just marked it there. Looking at the daily, we can see this was the lows over the past two days, correct? Bottom of the wicks here. So the breakout of this low would have led to a continuation of a bearish trend. Okay? Write that down. And now we have it here. So third touch, rejection. Beautiful. So we know because of this third touch on this huge trend line, we've had one touch here, two touches here, and then there's a huge depth in this trend line. 
So what happens, does, what does it generally mean when you have a huge space between trending structure? If we had come up and touched trend line here, and then buyers maintain price above here, and we came up and we touched trend line again here, my money is on a break. My money is going to be on a breakout because market structure would have told me that I've bounced on this trend line structure very aggressively here. We've come up, we've retested price, we've stayed above this level here, and we've retested price again. What we see there is a shallowing of touching, right? If you can see, we have this huge, this is obviously you'll see this in different trend lines we'll look at. We've got this distance from this, so from this distance to this distance on between touches. If it was to touch like that, hypothetically, and then, you know, let me just actually keep these candles on here for you guys. And then if it was to touch from there to there, that signals buying pressure, guys, right? Because buyers are not giving up on this trend line structure and they keep retesting it and they keep wanting to break it basically because sellers are not able to knock them down. But here, because of this, uh, let me rid of this, let me rid of this. Yeah. Because we have this huge gap between trend line touches, we can clearly establish that sellers are going to kick this pair to the floor, right? Because sellers have been maintaining this trend, not allowing buyers to get up to it. And as soon as we touch it on this huge distance between these two trends, look at the rejection, right? Huge rejection. Now, if we just fix this, actually, let's go back onto the weekly so it's a little bit nicer. Um, moving over here, I mean, look at the look at that engulfing on that weekly, insane, and that's all from this trend line touch here, right? And we keep playing. Look at that price has just continued to melt down, right? And now we are here where we're at. Now, what I would have done on this formation of this new low here, uh, um, I just highlight it. This formation of this new low, I'll move my trend line structure now. Because this is a wick, right? We have the ability to be a little bit flexible in our movement here. So moving it here to touch these wicks down here, we can clearly see that it is quite an equal descending channel information here. So what can we expect now with JPY? Uh, well, quite frankly, you know, it looks like we're coming up to potentially retest it here. However, we had a huge bearish engulfing here. Um, so this is just an example of how we can play trend line structures, guys. But we can clearly see that this move here validates everything that we're looking for to confirm that there is a still a valid trend in play. Um, purely because we've got one touch, two touch, two touch highlights a potential trend. Like I said, third touch is either going to validate the trend or it's going to break out. Either way, on this third touch here, we can see an explosive movement down, or we're looking for an explosive movement up. So that is how we play trend line structures. So remember the two key rules is second touch, second potential lower high for a downtrend, or higher high, or higher low, sorry, for an uptrend. That establishes here, for example. Let's look at this structure just behind it. We have a potential trend information here. Right, you know, we can move it there. Why have I done the trend here? You know, yes, we are breaking the rule of wicks to wicks, but we're not really because we've got one wick touching here, we've got one wick touching here, and we've broken this little wick here. But we've got more touch points on this section here now that we've put, crossed into that wick. That we've got three price touches on this trend line, and you can see how now that even intersects with these trend. These price marks up here, um, keep in mind they're just shy of the trend line. We had three touches. What would we expect here? How did we know that there was going to be a breakdown of this trend structure here? This high here, right? As soon as we saw that we didn't break this high on this rejection of this trend line, we could make the assumption with the bearish uh, engulfing coming down off this high here that we're going to break this trend line structure because we had three touches, but we did not make new highs. And we've come back down to test it. Remember what I said back here? Let's look at the distance here. We've got, you know, decent distance. Oop. Decent distance. And then 
no distance, right? Buyers could not maintain any depth on that trend line structure and they brought it right back down. So my money on, would have been on a breakdown there, of course, again. So now let's look at GJ again. GJ has just been fantastic for trending. And I just want to look at it from a four hour volume to see how it meets the rule. It met the rules and the criteria for us to enter the trade. So again, here, looking at weekly trade, weekly structure, uh, we can clearly see that it is in a downtrend or it was in a downtrend. We've established multiple times that this low here broke the trend and this high here also broke the trend. Although you could have played it nicely off the trend line structure once we had the rejection on the third touch. So wick. Second touch, okay, we've established a potential trend. Third touch, rejection, break of the daily loads. You know, here we broke down and boom, we got a rejection. However, new low, high low was formed. But we're going to look at this trend structure here from a four hour perspective. Let's get rid of that fib. Um, let me just keep it. So, this is the trending structure we made on GJ on a four hour volume now. And we can see beautiful price action. We've got our initial low here. Now we're in an uptrend. We had price come up, retested here, second touch. You can see a nice deep move. You know, it was not a shallow move. Price moved quite aggressively up, came back down, did not falter at all on the trend line structure. And we had another nice deep bounce coming off that trend line structure. Yes, we had a shallow touch here. The depth of touches decreased. However, very clearly, we had no break. Oh. We had no breakdown of trending structure here. Wicks, nothing. Completely accepted the fact that this trend line structure was here. And you can quite clearly see here that trend lines don't lie. You've just got to draw them properly. Now, what do we do with the three rules that we We've already established second touch establish a potential trend third touch and this is where we traded it guys this is where we traded it why because we've established now on the third touch there is no breaking right so we entered longs on this third touch and that the assumption that trend was going to continue and you can see here price has moved beautifully as predicted you know we bought gj all the way up to here mid bank on that 422 pips unfortunately we got caught trying to short it here um, because it was holding a consolidation pattern above the support level. But now what we could predict from price action here, because although we have not broken this resistance level, you know, these candles have still closed above these and technically closed the new high. So what I might be looking for now on GJ, uh, should sellers keep it going down a little bit, is a touchdown here on this trend line structure here, right? If we touch this trend line structure, and again, Trend stays in play. We get some rejections. In fact, even better, in confluence, if we get a price into this area here, into this area here, this is my confluence that I would talk to you about at the very start of the video. We've got intersecting trend lines here. This is a beautiful four hour uptrend, and this is also the backside of our daily descending trend line structure. And it is also the 62. It is also. The 62 Fibonacci of our coronavirus sell-off. So we've got a huge confluence here, three confluences of support. Three confluences of support is a multiplier where I'm willing to bet that there's buyers lurking here because this is going to be a big bounce or a, break, or a big breakdown. So GJ remains neutral until we come down to test these structures here. I made the mistake of being a bit too aggressive trading it last week. We could get a bounce from here. We will have to see. Remember, it is all price action based, guys. Trading is it's a probability game. Everyone says, you know, you get a lot of these signal groups and everyone says, oh, yeah, you know, it's just well, our strategy is the best, everything like that. Guys, no strategy is foolproof. No strategy is 100%. All you really have to do is be patient in trading um, and then still things don't work out your way. You know, it is how it is. Trading is a probability game. And what we are doing as traders is trying to beat the probability. Um, and how we do that is based on price action because when we can see uh, bullish pressure, bearish pressure based on these confluences of areas where you know we can see that there's some supportive or resistance structure, um, that's where we're basically, it's still getting 
gambling. It's just calculated gambling, basically. Uh, the best gamblers in the world, the best sports bettors in the world, you know, they're still gambling, but they just know that they know their data, they know their stats, they know the performance of the teams they're betting on. We're doing the same thing in the Forex market, guys. We're analyzing previous price action history, and we're going to make a probability on what we think price is going to happen. And that's simply what trading is, unfortunately. It's, it's you know, it's just a case of uh, using what best tools we have and what previous price has told us to make a probability and make a assumption of what price is going to do but this area would be a keen interest for me we'll either see a breakdown of gj or we will see a nice huge bounce and my projected targets on gj still remain uh you know i still remain, remain projected to reach at least 79 fibonacci to break these highs and retest this level of support and resistance here that's my viewpoint on DJ. This area will be of extreme interest to me should we break these lows here and come down to retest these levels. Um, looking at GU as well, we can see uh, I'm looking for buys here. Why? Because we've got an established trend line structure here, two touches. Uh, we broke trend here. We've come out. You've seen we found resistance on the uh, found support on the confluence of trend line structure and also uh, horizontal. And again, we're coming down to retest that level here. Uh, which does line up with a couple of our Fibonacci levels as well, um, mainly being this 0 0.23, you know, from this low, this low here to this high on the breakout. Um, that confluence of support right there is of extreme interest to me. Uh, I would like to see GU bounce. I think what we saw in the DXY is just an NFP boost, uh, but I think we will continue to break down, hopefully. And I'd like to see a bounce off structure here trend line structure, and then a continuation. Uh, but that's it, guys. You know, trend line structures, like I said, they're super subjective, but stick to the rules. Just to recap, it's three touches establishes a potential trend. Use your wicks, draw wicks to wicks. Bodies can be acceptable should there be a different formation of low that you could potentially move or a different high to potentially move on the uptrend. But wicks to wicks, second touch establishes a potential trend. Third touch will either establish a valid trend or a breakout. Uh, same thing, GBCAD, look, beautiful four-hour structure here, wick to wick, we came down, Christ created a new low, we created a new high here, bounced down on this trend line structure, so we knew our trend was here. We didn't draw a trend like that, that's not cool. Um, we drew it from there to there, and then price came back down, bounced, created a new low, we created a new high, and we retested on the third touch and broke out, guys. Um, and remember, another rule of key is the steeper the trend line, the more likely it is to break. Whereas when there's a more depth in the price action towards trend line, then the less likely it is to break. But obviously, price action will confirm that. Um, so that's the rules, guys. Write them down. I'll put it in the description. My the rules, um, and just keep keep note of that. Practice, you know, back test everything like that. Um, back test on the rewind tool on TradingView, or you, I don't know if it's available on the free issue. Obviously, I pay for the professional one, but it's only ten dollars a month, guys. It's worth it. Um, but that's it, guys. That's a basic wrap-up of trend lines. Give it a go. If you have any questions, you know where to reach me. Uh, and like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Let's get these videos out there, guys. Another great week for the first week of August. We smashed it. Uh, and, you know, now NFP week's done. I'm looking forward to trading the rest of August. Anyway, guys, take it easy. It's a beautiful day in London. Hopefully some of you are enjoying this weather. Peace.